It's me, Dim Sony. Welcome back to another VR video. Today we are back in Project TX once again. And uh, today is going to be a much smaller upgrade than the uh, than the last one, a smaller update. Now, the first thing you should notice is that the feet look a little bit better. Uh, I haven't put much work into them. They're still uh, they're still doing pretty much the same same stuff as before. So uh, it's very simple and uh, very basic. They just sort of move around a little. However, I've put some more work into the thing on my wrist. Now, let's get you over here first. Um, there we go, a little bit closer. Now you should be able to see me nice and easy, right? Uh, so have a look at the watch here. You'll see that it, it does pop up and it looks a little different to how it did before. Now, the best way to actually see this is to look at it through my eyes. And you'll notice here that when you look forward here, I'm just going to switch it over to that. There we go, a little bit further. You can see the camera that you were actually looking from before. Uh, now this is actually the the floating camera it is going to be a physics camera and i'll uh, i'll enable an option to drop it and uh, be able to actually move it and position it and rotate it um, but for now it's just a floating camera it will go through objects like that as you can see it just kind of goes through and i can't actually touch it that red light actually switches to green uh, as soon as you switch the camera on but right now you should be seeing from my actual point of view and uh, this means that you can actually see how cool the watch looks by itself there we go in game right now the actual angle that it activates at is a little bit too uh, excessive uh, which makes it more prone to um, accidental uh, accidental activation but uh, you should be able to notice that uh, that actually i am able to actually sort of control the options on here as well now it's not a touch button thing or anything like that and yes again that is the correct time it's not a touch button thing the options are being controlled by my actual buttons on my on my controller, right? So here, when they're loaded up, I can actually switch the controllers on, for example. And what I'm doing is simply pressing the A, B, X and Y buttons. Now the X button is going to be the back button for sub menus, but for now I haven't actually loaded up the menus. Um, I'm still going to work on this system. It's right now, it's, it's only sort of uh, a halfway done thing. These are all just hard coded in. And you can see I've got uh, options for controllers. I can switch gr low gravity on. I've got the camera zoom, which is this. There we go. You can see that. And then, of course, the camera option itself, which switches from this to that. Hello. Right. So that's the cool thing. I have control over it um, entirely without uh, being used, you know, sort of physical, right? And the reason it, I don't want it to be physical is so that it has more capabilities while you're sort of walking, walking around and, and working on whatever you're doing. Um, that's really cool because these are the context sensitive buttons. What I'm still doing, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, was all of my movement controls are on the analog sticks, right? So crouch, uh, jump, turning and moving around, of course, are all on the analog sticks, all on the left and right analog sticks. Uh, but the actual buttons themselves do pretty much nothing. Right now, while you're not, you haven't got the menu up, uh, the camera actually gets controlled by the X and uh, X and B buttons. Yes, I have to try and remember those. Uh, if we get the controllers up, you can see them. So here, uh, no, not X, Y and B buttons control the actual uh, the actual camera there. And of course, while this is open, you can actually switch between things using those same buttons. It's a context sensitive system, right? So here, let me just get the controller switched off so that we can actually see something much cooler. Uh, let's switch you back over to that camera so that you can actually have a look around and see what we've got here. Now you'll notice the, the actual level area has changed a little bit. I am just neatening up the place a little bit, uh, but uh, mainly what we're looking at here today is some physics changes. A lot of people have asked about physics changes. Uh, now, I've actually slightly tweaked the uh, strength of the of the hands once again, just to make sure they are a little bit more in line with what I want for, for the game's physics, which is why when I go over to here, for example, if I lift this up, I can't just lift it straight away now. Uh, so if I switch on the controllers, you can see, where are you? There you are. You can see that just lifting my hand straight away 
it's not as light as it was before. Now this of course affects climbing and everything, uh, but we'll have a look at these first. Firstly, let me zoom you in. There we go. You should be able to see the hammer here. Now what you can see in my hand here is very important. What you can see is the actual tilting of the hammer. Now I was supposed to do the Boneworks video, How It Works video part two, uh, before I did this video because, um, but I, I just never got around to it. Because what I wanted to show in that video is one of the things that they did very, very well. Uh, a lot of games try and try and achieve this as well, which is the idea of having your fingers actually tilt the object in your hand. Because just the controls themselves, right? If you look at how you, oop, I'm grabbing it. If you look at how you hold them here, if you look at how you hold them, right? You can see that the controller is held it's, it's not actually held upright in your hand. It's actually held at an angle, right? And this is sort of like a, like a gun. You would, you would hold a pistol sort of like at that angle, right? Now, the same thing applies to any other object, except usually you kind of, by default, your thumb points directly up, and that's the up direction that you would hold something in. But that's not actually the direction you'd hold something like this in, because you would actually modify that depending on how you're holding it. So here you can see as I have my hand tilted like this, the object is held almost almost straight up, right? Almost straight up vertically compared to how I'm holding the controller. Whereas as I tilt further, you can see it actually tilts further, al further along relative to my hand. So it's not just the whole hand that's tilting forward. The hand is staying in line with the controller. And you can see the fingers actually push out a little bit and the hammer leans forward. Now, the way I'm doing this is actually based on my uh, IK structures, my uh, sort of animation structures, as I mentioned before. But when you switch off the controllers, you can see how cool this actually looks. If I grab it here with the other hand, you can actually see me controlling it. There we go. You can see how my hand actually twists in, in place. And the reason I wanted to do the Boneworks video first is because they do something very, very similar to how I'm doing it, which is based on some sort of tilt. Now, I don't know exactly their math, that doesn't really matter. I like to do things uniquely anyway. And I don't, of course, I don't want to copy what is going on everywhere else. I just take inspiration from everything and put it all together, see how good we can get these kinds of systems, which is kind of the way games are developed in general. You take inspiration from something that came before and you try and get better at everything you do over time. This is really cool because this applies to everything. And this is what makes it easier to swing the hammer, right? So if I do this, it actually swings easier because I'm no longer having to sort of deal with the, the hand holding the hammer like this. I can very easily tilt it out all the way uh, forward without tilting my whole hand that far because that's not what you would do in reality. Uh, in reality, you would actually tilt your fingers forward. Now, I am going to consider uh, doing something where you'd be able to control that manually with your, with your controllers. So for example, here I've got a trigger and a grip. So it would be quite easy to do that. Um, let's switch back over to the other camera so that you're not getting all dizzy with all my VR control. Uh, the same thing applies, of course, with this bat. And you can see here, it looks really cool to actually swing it nice and easily, right? And then, of course, if I grabbed it with two hands, for example, I'd be like, batter up! <laughs> and let's throw that away. Now, of course, I've got a sword here that doesn't work very well because it, it doesn't have the settings that I want. But again, they do the same thing. Uh, let's zoom you in. Oop, oop. There we go. And you can see here that I can tilt the sword in the same way. And that makes it nice and easy to swing it as I want, right? Very, very easy to swing it as I want. Right? It looks about right, which is what you want. Very, very cool. Let's have a look at that other thing there. Move you out there again. So here I have some uh, test physics objects once again. Now these things use the same uh, the same, same sort of tilt mechanic. In fact, I'll probably show you that on these uh, on the weights as well. I have modified the physics very slightly, so these things aren't as good. But what they are doing is uh, they are sort of uh, automated grabbers, right? Uh, you just put them on a on a thing that you want to on a surface that you want to grab and activate the trigger and they grab that surface. There we go, nice and easy. And the same thing with these, there we go. This one's a heavy one, can't really lift it. Same thing with this, there we go. Heavy objects, you can do that. 
Of course, this thing grabs pretty much anything, which means I can, for example, stick it onto my onto my uh, onto my uh, forearm there, or I can stick it onto itself. It went through itself. There we go. And stick it onto itself, uh, which causes a little bit of a physics break, uh, problems there. So not that. But the other thing I can do is, of course, stick it onto my head. Did the other one stick as well? Yeah, it is. It's on there. There it is. <laughs> so there we go. This is because it's all physics, of course. These are all physics objects. So I can just stick these things onto myself. They are full physics grabs, right? So the same thing applies here. And of course, that means we can climb as well. So if you just uh, move around the corner there, and then we can grab these things and actually start climbing with them. Now, as you can see, I do struggle very slightly because the physics of the hands, the actual limit of the, the forces and muscles there are very close to just not being able to pull myself up very easily. Uh, the legs do move very slightly in a way that, uh, that maneuvers based on where my hands are reaching as well which makes it uh, a little bit nicer on the hand. Um, ooh, sometimes you do get elbow problems. I, have, I am gonna work on that, make sure it looks good. Uh, sorry that the camera is not able to actually look up. But what I can do, of course, is show you the camera from my view. Here we go. So this is how it looks from my view. And of course, things get a little bit cooler when we do something different, which is here, we can switch to low gravity mode. Now, with low gravity mode, of course, you have gravity set to 1.3 meters per second squared instead of 9.8. 1, 9.8, 1, yeah. So we'll switch you back to the camera over there, and that makes it easy for me to actually climb because I can just use one hand. I can very easily throw myself about. Whee! <laughs> oh no, I'm falling away. Now, I barely have any uh, air control on my character right now, which means that if I get pushed away from the wall, there's no going back. Um, it's very, very weak air control right now. And I did that on purpose because I want to really, really far test the physics. Sorry, the camera was a little bit out of place there. There we go. Nice and cool. What a great place to test it in. <laughs> um, now I am going to do some other fun things with architecture. Where is the camera there? Uh, with architecture and actually climb different buildings and maybe even put something simple into the the tech demo the tech demo is going to have as much as i can really put into it though there are certain mechanics that i won't be putting in there on purpose because i'm going to be working on making them look really really good um, now of course before i uh, end the video because there isn't much in this video it's uh, it's exactly what i was sort of saying it's going to be a very simple oh yeah the camera kind of zooms in because this object is on that uh, default layer which uh, this, this camera is sort of tracking based on the zoom sort of thing. Uh, so there we go. Uh, but yeah, as I could say, uh, uh, as you can see, it's, um, it's quite fun to have that kind of control and be able to climb things and do whatever you want. Now, here we go. If you have a look from my point of view, you can see, you can see that here on the, the bars, you have that same sort of soft grab effect. And that controls how these bars are actually moving. Now you can see here, I do have that physical limitation here. The red bar is, uh, the red weights are actually now too heavy for my character to lift at all. So even when I lift it over, let me switch you back over to there. So even when I lift it over, lift it onto my body, I just can't lift it, right? I can't actually pick it up off my head. Yeah, doesn't do anything brilliant <laughs> so yeah uh, just about pushed the the hand physics down the strength of the hands down a little bit enough to to make things really just at the limit of uh, oh, I crouched a little bit too quick there just at the limit of the actual movement system which makes things feel like almost everything's got weight uh, but that's pretty much everything I wanted to show in this video the context menu is going to be really, really powerful for me to add anything to the game. And you can see that already in this in this little demo, which hasn't got much in it at all, right? Uh, being able to switch things very, very quickly. This thing will be allowing you to, to switch between hybrid uh, regular locomotion and the exploration mode that I mentioned in a different video. If you haven't seen that video, please do check that out once again, because uh, that's quite an important part of what I want to do 
with my systems, right? It's not just about gaming, it's about experiencing a different world entirely. And uh, I am expanding beyond that as well. Uh, so that's something you should look at. Have a look at the exploration mode. Uh, within this tech demo, I'll be trying to put all of the little de uh, demonstrations and things that I've been trying out uh, as well. All of my little experimental stuff. So, for example, the um, there was a demo I put out with the hybrid loco, the blah, 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 accessibility version, which allows you to actually sit down and, and play um, while seated, but still have a feeling of sort of walking. It's not perfect, of course. Uh, there's no way that I can allow you to really feel like you're walking when you're sitting down But I wanted to try and give you the best feeling that I could of walking Without you know being able to walk. It's really more intended for people who actually have trouble standing up and actually have trouble walking in reality um, Rather than just people who just want to sit down Although of course it's going to be viable for those people who just want to sit down So all of those little bits and bats I'm going to put on the on the wristwatch here which is uh, going to be a very advanced little tool and allow you to switch dynamic options within the game and also allow you context sensitive options for whatever object you're holding uh, so this is now the context menu this is going to be the advanced context menu for everything uh, within the game not the main menu though. so i'll probably put an exit button on the main menu calibration and stuff like that as well for how tall you are and all of that good stuff maybe arm length checking as well so there you go that's pretty much the end of this video sorry i keep going on a little bit so uh, my my ranting skills have uh, improved <laughs> uh, but yeah there we go that's pretty much the end of this video thanks very much for watching i will show you a bunch of new stuff in the next one as well um and maybe i, I won't be doing project tx next week but i don't know maybe maybe not so see you in the next one thanks very much for watching goodbye